Let's take a look at one of the most important tropical environments on Earth, coral reefs. Corals are found all over the world, but the ones that build huge reefs, like this one in Hawaii, only live in shallow tropical waters. These are places where the water is warm and lots of sunlight can reach the coral. Coral reefs cover less than 1% of the ocean bottom. However, 25% of marine life depend on them in one way or another. Take a look at this reef. There are a few things you notice right away when you go diving near a coral reef, as I did in Hawaii in the summer of 2015. Look how clear the water is. It's not that the water is cleaner. Plankton, those tiny plants and animals that make up the bottom of the food web in the ocean, tend to like colder water. And that's why you can't see your feet when you wade into cooler water. But look how clear this water is in the tropics. So how does the food web in the tropical ocean work? Well, that's where coral reefs come in. They are a huge part of keeping the tropical ocean food web operating. When you leave the reef, you don't see as many fish. The fish tend to go where the food is, and there are a lot of fish on this reef. So what else do you notice about the reef? Look at all the colors. People think coral is colorful, but it's really not. This is what coral actually looks like. In this picture, I am holding a piece of coral, but the entire beach behind me is covered with it. The coral you are seeing in the picture are the white shells or skeletons of a tiny animal called a polyp. Each coral polyp builds its shell one on top of the other until a reef forms. So where does the color come from? Algae. Corals and algae live together in what biologists call symbiosis. They need each other in order to live. The algae live in the corals. The warm water and sunlight help them grow and thrive. The coral polyp, the little animal inside the coral shell, gets some of the energy for their bodies from the algae, and both are able to survive and thrive together. Other fish arrive to eat as well, and an entire food web forms. That food web includes about 25% of all the life in the ocean. When we think of climate change, we often think about melting ice, but the tropics are just as vulnerable as the Arctic. When the ocean warms, the delicate balance between the coral polyp and the algae is affected. If the water gets just a few degrees too warm for the coral, their natural reaction is to kick off the algae. They appear completely white. Scientists call this a coral bleaching event. But remember, the coral polyp needs the algae in order to live. They can survive for a while in a bleached state, just like you can skip a meal once in a while, but they can't survive for very long. Corals have been dying in the tropical seas because of this all around the world. And remember, the fish around the reefs also need the coral and the algae in order to survive. When human beings pollute the air with carbon dioxide, some of that gets into the oceans. When it does, it changes the ocean chemistry in ways that can affect the coral. The pH of the ocean becomes lower. Scientists call this ocean acidification. It's basically a change in the chemistry of the ocean, and it causes the coral shells to become weak. Stronger storms in our warming world also can harm coral, and that's just the damage from climate change. We aren't even talking about overfishing, damage from ships, pollution from land, and from certain fishing techniques, which can also harm coral reefs. And remember, 25% of all ocean life depend on these unique reefs for survival. What we do on land matters in the ocean and the health of the ocean depends on us.